Thank you. Uh, that's a question for you. You know, the American investigators found that, uh, in particular in Caribe and Latin America, South America, the leaders of FIFA were getting bribes. And, uh, however, I select this. The New York Times, June 5th, 2015. Corruption in FIFA, its auditor saw none. And the argument is FIFA has received a clean bill of financial health for 16 consecutive years from KPMG, one of the world's top auditing, accounting, and consulting firm. And this is a question for all of you. Why this happen? What is the reason that in 16 years, KPMG never found that corruption in, in, in FIFA was systematic and widespread? You are the expert guy, so tell me why. Uh, do you believe that KPMG was discussing with those who are, who are taking bribes? No, they were not. They were conducting some kind of research on, in fact, finding on what happened when they were doing contracts, because in fact, all the information is about contracts in Latin America, it's not about contracts in FIFA. So, was part of their control environment or not? Yes. Fine. Fine. So I don't know if everyone. Yeah, repeat it again. Yeah, but yeah. Can you, can I imagine can that you? the idea is that uh, probably they follow a, a protocol of audit, a program of audit, and from a strict protocolar perspective was okay, and so probably they didn't go further to investigate the other liars between, um, um, let's say, in the red flags that I imagine there should be some kind of red flags, but probably they were not followed through. But first, you know, the, the investigations show illegal business in CONCACAF and CONMEBOL, who, which are Latin and South American Caribbean organizations. It's not FIFA. So if I get PMG, look, I have nothing to say about this. It's not my business. You know, it's not a business, I believe. So you are the accountant of FIFA, not of CONCACAF. The problem is FIFA is controlled by the regional organizations. The members of the board are the members of the regional organizations. It's a third party. And they are not getting, they were not getting that now part of your problem is you need to control the third parties. And I think for me, my, what I take from FIFA, case and the KPMG case is basically they do the classics, the normal protocols that you mentioned, internal control. But internal control is not enough now. It's not that is required to the companies. And are there protocols how to do third party management? Not so good, not so clear. We don't know what to do with that. And that I think is the problem. So It's not working. How can I move this? Hey, my IT guys. Oh, oh, I took too much. Okay. Okay, the colors are not good in here, but one of the problems is what is happening is, in particular, US at UK and China, at least, and now Brazil, are exporting a control problem. And big companies had to work in countries different colors. But if you are coming from, a, you have to be a yellow company, and you're working in a red country, you don't like to play red. And therefore, you have to control who's, who are working with you. 
And it's not just a policy decision of the company now, because in the past, and it's still happening, the companies were adjusting to this environment. The companies were doing what the locals were doing, or more. And, but now, it's not just a company decision. If they're in the US stock, and they're men, not just Americans, many, the Dodd Frank is forcing them to check what they are doing. And as I think, as you say, there's no protocol for that. And that is for me my topic. I see that, I see, it's funny, I'm old, so I am watching how the world is evolving in the last 40 years. When I was 32, I was the deputy prosecutor in one of the first cases after Nuremberg against the top commanders. And they had no idea they could be prosecuted. It was absolutely crazy in those days. Then I became the chief prosecutor, as you see, becoming normal in the world. But this happened after 35 years. And after that, I started to work in anti-corruption measures. And I remember I was in 95 in the, OECD com in the first conversation about the OECD conventions in Paris. The, the Germans were not going to the meeting. They refused to join the meeting. And the French were thinking, it's crazy, this, is, this issue. And, and now it's, it's a standard. So what I see is an evolution. And I see we are not adjusting to the evolution. And I like to see, I also, I myself, I try to evolve. So I'm no more the chief prosecutor of the SEC. I'm in private practice, trying to see how to apply Dodd-Frank, but no one knows Dodd-Frank. So I said, okay, we, we should invent a company to help the company first. So I will present to you something we are doing to help companies to have assistance to do third-party due diligence. But in the meantime, let me, the first problem is you are now with a new task, it was not your task. And that's required, and I think that is, that is for me my main line. You should move from internal control to network analysis. That, I'm sorry, <laughs> that is, that's a new challenge for you. It's not about internal control, forget it. Internal control is the easy part now. Network analysis is the biggest problem you have. And, uh, and that is FIFA about. And that is Siemens about. And that is Petrobras about. And that is Montesinos about. I don't know who of you heard about Vladimir Montesinos. Can you raise your hands? Okay, some of you. Vladimir Montesinos was the head of intelligence of Fujimori. And he was managing an office where he was basically bribing, for instance, he called the head of the position and she, and she agreed to receive a monthly payment of $15,000. And they agreed. And then she asked, okay, what I should do now? I should move to, Montes to Fujimori party. And Montesino said, no, no, no. You are the head of the opposition party. You remain in the opposition. You, remember, you, you stay in the opposition. When I need something from you, I call you. And the funny thing is, this guy was taping this meet, 800 meeting like that. And one day, all the 100 videos were captured, uh, called the bloody videos. And we had some technical problem. I don't think we can show you. Yeah, it's black. In the black box, you have to use your imagination, because it's a wonderful video where Montesino is counting the money he's giving to a mayor of one city. And there are 800 of that, OK? 800 of that. Montesino giving money, making favors. And and for me, that was the best. He, did, he investigated himself. So it's the best investigation I never saw on this corruption network. And what we did is the following. Each number is an individual, film it. And we put them all together in different places. The political parties, the media, the private sector, municipal government, military, state bureaucracy, judiciary, legislative branch, international people, civil society. So each number is a person who is talking to Montesinos in the video. And that's a network. And then when you are dealing with corruption problems, it's not an individual. We've, lawyers focus on individuals. But this is not an individual problem. It's a network problem. And interestingly, look, 
there are few cases where money changes sides. These lines are the cases where money was paid. It's 19%, meaning 81% was just reciprocity, favors. But for instance, example, one of the private sector was the executive director of the bank. He went to see Montesinos and said, I have a problem. There is a judge reviewing our tax payment this year. If they decide something different, I have a huge problem with my balance. Can you just postpone the decision for next year? I will manage differently. Just postponement, no problem. Montesinos immediately took the phone, called the judge, asked for his son, because he offered a job to his son. His son, well, let me know if he needs. Okay, I have a friend here who needs a favor. You have this case. Yes, you have it. Can you just postpone the case? Postponement, no problem. Solve it. So imagine, the executive director was so grateful. Thank you so much. And then Montesino said, wait a minute. There are two media owners, owners of TV, who got debt with your bank. How can refinance them? Can you help me? So immediately they start to talk how to refinance the TV channels. And there will be different meetings where Montesinos explained to them how, they, if he helped them, they could do the refinanciation. So that is the problem. And then what are the protocols for dealing with that? What, how you can face this problem? And that's exactly why KPMG was ignoring them. Because then you keep in the protocol, you keep in the books, and you are safe. Because as soon as you open this window, oh my God, <laughs> what do I do with this? Uh, my proposal to do today is to start to explore with you what we can do. But I understand you are, the, you are just in a company, and you are a piece of the company. So your speed will be connected with the speed of your own company. Your company has their own, so I have to present you this framework, and you have to start to see yourself what you can do in your own place. But I'd like to open this door to see, help you and help me to discuss what we can do in this problem, because these are the real problems. It's no more the paradigm of the international, of the criminal law, it's different. And then I try to present what I think should be the solution. Let me see. Yeah. For me, I'd like to present some assumptions we use to think that May help us to be calm and happy. First is we have binary ethic, okay? There are good guys and there are bad guys. That's easy. And then most of the people are good guys and there are a few bad guys. And then, more important for our life, is in our company, most, almost, almost all of them are good guys. Eventually we have a bad guy. And that's why, if we remove the bad guy, the company is wonderful, it's perfect. Okay? And then it, we can, no one thinks this, but okay, we can dream that this is true. Okay? Of course, not, 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 not first, first assumption. It's true, there are good guys, there are bad guys, but most of us are, we're sinful, we're sinners. We can be, so let me define. A green guy, a good guy, is so honest that you cannot tempt this person to change. You can offer $5,000 on the, on the table, this person will not take it. The red guy is so bad that you tell him, look, don't touch the $5,000 because the camera filming you, and the guy will take the $5,000 and the camera and steal both. <laughs> so there is no way to dissuade him. The yellow guys are for me the interesting people because the behavior of the yellows depend on the environment. And that is the goal of a company, no? Because you cannot have all Mother Teresa's in the company. The issue is, if you have a system, and it's part of your work, a system to help the yellow guys to behave like green and not behave like devils. So that's all the idea. And to make it a little more complicated is, these are the, okay, there are some numbers most or, most, or, most or less, these are the numbers. And uh, of course, 
the, the, depends how the company is, the situation is. If the top guy, if you work for Commebol, you have a problem. Commebol accepted, Commebol has 10 federations. Nine presidents accepted to be bribed. Argentina and Brazil received three millions, and the others received 1.5 million. And I believe Chile did not accept it. So, but if you are working for this Argentina, Brazil, then you have a problem in the, in, in the company, no? And interestingly, you can have green people inside the bad companies. For me, one of the most attractive things in Siemens is that, as you know, Siemens accepted that they, had, they decided to pay bribes around the world. I don't know if you know, you follow that detail, but Siemens was considering how we can control the 40, 50, 70 million had to pay each year. It's difficult to request compliance to our bribe takers. So what to do? And they said the, the only possible solution is to have a very, very honest man in charge of paying the bribes. And they did that. They selected the most honest manager in Siemens, and he, they put him to pay the bribes. When the guy was arrested, <laughs> he said, I knew it. I told them not to do it. We'll be catch it. So that for me is also interesting. Corruption is not about nice guys or bad guys. A good guy could be also a piece in the system. And in fact, the red guy in Siemens was asking for a good green guy to pay the bribes. And the green guy was convinced that he had to do it because he's obedient and also the business of the company depends on that. And it's not, it's not about it's not individual moral ethic. It's working for the company. And, uh, yeah. And the problem with the bad network is even the company is run by a green guy. But you have no idea if the agent here is dealing with a lower level guy because who knows? Who can control that? And that's what now your duty as a compliance officer. You have to certify that your agents and your suppliers are working as green, as honest, sane people. <laughs> and you have no idea how to approach them, okay? And I feel that is the problem. That's the future, and you have to think how to deal with it. Um, for me, even I am a criminal lawyer, and I spend time putting people in jail. It's not about putting people in jail. It's reforming organizations. I'm providing tools to the managers to find a good way to do business. Because also, I believe it's not just a legal requirement. In the long term, if, you, if your company has good suppliers and good agents, your company will work better. So you can help them to, make, to maximize profits doing honest business. And in fact, I try to do that. I don't like to, <laughs> yeah, I don't like to work for wrong causes. I like to work for good causes. And it's a good business. Uh, so I think one important concept is you replace network with networks. So the only way to face the problem is developing good networks. And in this sense, compliance could be a piece in the development of good networks. Because it's not just about finding perfect people. Because, in fact, regulations are not requiring you to have perfect people as suppliers. Because even if a person is making mistakes, you can tell them, okay, you did a mistake, you have to open an account in this country. Or your people have to take this training. Or in fact, I'm sorry, I know your nephew, but he is a sister of the, of the Minister of, of Interior in the country had to remove him from the board. So it's not about using criminal investigation against them. It's about establishing the rules, because that is your game, establishing the rules. And then let people play according to the rule. And to do that, you need the people who understand the game, playing the game, and leading the game. And that is that's why when I left the ICC, Okay, I, I know, I'm no more involved in mass in genocide, going back to corruption issues. I was saying, okay, it's not about being a criminal lawyer. I like to be in New York because New York has, is the epicentric of they can do Dodd Frank, it's fun. Yeah, and in fact, they did the FIFA case. 
Um, but for me, the idea had to provide tools to the companies. I, I am not sure, I was thinking, I don't have to sell something to them, but it's just showing what I'm trying to do, what we are trying to do is that. We develop a software offering the company that the company requested suppliers to put information on board. And it's interesting, many companies have no idea who are really the suppliers. There's no a place to put information together with, with procurement and together with finances. And then it's easy to do that. And we work on that, then we conduct a simple background search for all of them. Then if one day the company has a problem, you did the best you could. You do the background search of all of them. And then the, the software do a risk analysis, and it's not abstract risk analysis. It's not about Argentina or Paraguay. It's about individuals, what happened, not just with the company, with individual members of the company, and the, comp and the software produce the mitigating measures. And then at least the minimum you are safe because the, the, the mechanisms integrate the preventative measure to the entire companies, and we recommend opening bank accounts or training, whatever. And then if you have a problem one day, you did the best you could. That's the minimum. The maximum is this could be a tool to develop the, to face, to develop the, the, green, the green networks. So for me, going back to the main idea is, yeah, this, I think the graph probably, that's our life. We're dealing with that. And we need to learn how we can map that. And it's not about individual connection, it's about we need to use new mechanisms to map that and to promote that and to face our challenge, which is this. Moving from internal control to network analysis. Guillermo Jorge, to be here, he's working with me on this. In fact, he knows everything about the rules. Can you raise your hand? Okay, thank you, Guillermo Jorge. He's a, he will give you all the details about this effort, and we're discussing with some of you because we like to learn. We are developing the product, and we are testing in Russia, but we like to take your idea how we can promote that because I believe that is the only solution for our problems. Thank you very much for this opportunity.